All human actions are motivated at their deepest level by one of two emotions, fear or love. In truth, there are only two emotions, only two words in the language of the soul. These are the opposite ends of the great polarity which I created when I produced the universe and your world as you know it today. These are the two points, the Alpha and the Omega, which allow the system you call relativity to be without these two points, without these two ideas about things, no other idea could exist. Every human thought and every human action is based in either love or fear. There is no other human motivation and all other ideas are but derivatives of these two. They are simply different versions, different twists on the same theme. Think on this deeply and you will see that it is true. This is what I have called the sponsoring thought. It is either a thought of love or fear. This is the thought behind the thought. It is the first thought. It is prime thought. It is the raw energy that drives the engine of human experience. And here is how human behavior produces repeat experience after repeat experience. It is why humans love, then destroy, then love again. Always there is the swing from one emotion to the other. Love sponsors fear. Fear sponsors love. And so it is that in the moment you pledge your highest love, you greet your greatest fear. For the first thing you worry about after saying I love you is whether you'll hear it back. And if you hear it back, then you begin immediately to worry that the love you have found you will lose. And so all action becomes reaction, defense against loss. Yet if you knew who you are, that you are the most magnificent, the most remarkable, the most splendid being God has ever created, you would never fear. For who could reject such wondrous magnificence? Not even God could find fault in such a being. Every single free choice you ever undertake arises out of one of the only two possible thoughts there are, a thought of love or a thought of fear. Fear is the energy which contracts, closes down, draws in, runs, hides, hoards, harms. Love is the energy which expands, opens up, stays, reveals, shares, heals. Fear wraps our bodies in clothing. Love allows us to stand naked. Fear clings to and clutches all that we have. Love gives all that we have away. Fear holds close. Love holds dear. Fear grasps. Love lets go. Fear rankles. Love soothes. Fear attacks, love amends. Every human thought, word, or deed is based in one emotion or the other. You have no choice about this because there is nothing else from which to choose. But you have free choice about which of these to select. I teach you this, that when you choose the action love sponsors, then will you do more than survive. Then will you do more than win. Then you will do more than succeed. Then you will experience the full glory of who you really are and who you can be. Yet the greatest reminder is not anyone outside you, but the voice within you. This is the first tool that I use because it is the most accessible. The voice within is the loudest voice with which I speak because it is the closest to you. It is the voice which tells you whether everything is true or false, right or wrong, good or bad as you have defined it. It is the radar that sets the course, steers the ship, guides the journey if you 
but let it. It is the voice which tells you now whether the very words you are reading are words of love or words of fear. By this measure can you determine whether they are words to heed or words to ignore. There is only one purpose for all of life, and that is for you and all that lives to experience fullest glory. Everything else you say, think, or do is attendant to that function. There is nothing else for which your soul to do, and nothing else your soul seeks to do. The wonder of this purpose is that it is never ending. An ending is a limitation, and God's purpose is without such boundary. Should there come a moment in which you experience yourself in your fullest glory, you will in that instant imagine an even greater glory to fulfill. The more you are, the more you can become. And the more you can become, the more you can yet be. The deepest secret is that life is not a process of discovery but a process of creation. You are not discovering yourself, but creating yourself anew. Seek, therefore, not to find out who you are. Seek to determine who you want to be. Life is an opportunity for you to know experientially what you already know conceptually. You need learn nothing to do this. You need merely remember what you already know and act on it. The soul knows all there is to know all the time. There's nothing hidden to it, nothing unknown. Yet knowing is not enough. The soul seeks to experience. You can know yourself to be generous, but unless you do something which displays generosity, you have nothing but a concept you can know yourself to be kind, but unless you do someone a kindness, you have nothing but an idea about yourself. 